Welcome back to Civil Wars. I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is on the breakdown of Yugoslavia in the early 1990s. I want to start off with a very quick history of Yugoslavia. So Yugoslavia existed in relative peace during the Cold War years. It was a country with a whole bunch of different ethnic groups inside of it. And during the Cold War, there was a communist regime in charge of the country. And during that time, all of these ethnic groups existed in relative harmony with one another. But that all changes at the end of the Cold War. So the Cold War ends and communism crumbles all around Eastern Europe, including inside of Yugoslavia. And at that point, the country breaks apart. Yugoslavia as we know it no longer exists. And instead, various minorities within Yugoslavia declare themselves independent, say, you know what, we're no longer a part of Yugoslavia. We have our own country now. Goodbye. And one of these countries is particularly interesting for our purposes. I want to talk about Croatia and their war of independence. So Croatia declares itself independent for the same reason as before. It is part of a greater Yugoslavia, but Yugoslavia is breaking apart. And so Croatia decides we're going to have our own Croatian country. And that Croatian country is going to relatively match where Croatians are living in Yugoslavia. But that doesn't mean that the borders that Croatia is declaring for itself actually contain just Croatians. There was a sizable Serbian population within the borders. And that sizable Serbian minority grows concerned. They think about what's going to happen in this country. If Croatia is going to be a democracy, and democracies favor majorities, that means that the Serbians are going to be a minority, and they have to be worried that Croatians as the majority are going to set up laws that are going to cast them aside and leave them as second-class citizens in this country. So the Serbians grow very concerned, and they decide, you know what, we're not going to let this happen. We're not going to have Croatia declare itself independent. We are going to start a conflict. We are going to ensure that we are going to be getting our rights. And what's even worse, if you're a Croatian here, is that these Serbs that are the minority in Croatia actually have the backing of Serbia, which was another one of these Yugoslav areas that declares itself independent because we have another minority in the country, Serbia, that decides that Serbia is going to be its own country. And the Serbia is going to back up the Serbian minority in Croatia and fight Croatia for Croatian independence. Now, what caused this war? The common explanation is ancient hatreds, that Croatians and Serbs have always hated each other, and this is just another manifestation of that. However, this is an absolutely terrible explanation for conflict for two reasons. First is a general problem with this sort of inference, and that is you cannot explain variation with a constant. So it is supposed to be an ancient hatred, which means that this hatred has always existed, at least for well, a very long time. And in that very long time, we see variation between peace and war. At some points, Croatians and Serbians were in harmony, and at some points they were not. At some points they were fighting each other. But ancient hatreds doesn't explain why they're sometimes fighting and sometimes they're not fighting, because these ancient hatreds are existing throughout that time period. You can't explain variation with a constant. People often try to do that, and it's really painful when they do, because it's just so terribly wrong. The other part of this is substantive. If you look at inter-ethnic marriage rates on the eve of the war, these things were growing higher and higher. So maybe some people had ancient hatreds for one another, but it's true that a growing portion of the population could not care less and was actually intermarrying with the other side, which allegedly they're supposed to hate. So these ancient hatreds don't really explain the conflict. But one thing that does help us understand why war broke out is the commitment problem that we talked about in the last lecture. So Croatia, when it declares itself independent, had not yet consolidated power. It was relatively weak. It did not have a functioning government to start with. It did not have the ability to collect tax revenues. It did not have the ability to raise a strong army instantaneously. But these are all things that are going to change over time. The reason that Croatia doesn't have this ability is because it hasn't been around for very long. But once it's been around for, say, a year, two years, three years, four years, it will be a much stronger regime. It will be a strong entity. It will be a strong country. In contrast, Serbia, that newly independent Serbia, was the military center of the former Yugoslavia. So Serbia is actually relatively strong here. And Serbia is not growing so much powerful over time because it already has its strength. It already has all of the strength that it would need to fight a war adequately. And we see that there's a commitment problem occurring here because power is shifting over time. Croatia is growing stronger and stronger and stronger. And that means Croatian commitment to maintaining the peace and not abusing Serbs in 
the country of Croatia is not credible over time. Serbs in Croatia need to be worried that although Croatians might be saying, you know what, don't fight a war against us, we're not going to abuse you later on, the Serbs in the country can't guarantee that Croatia will actually follow through on that once Croatia has grown more powerful, once Croatia has consolidated power. And we can actually see this reflected in the same game tree that we looked at in the last lecture. So let's look at that now. Before we were talking about drugs and Breaking Bad, here I've just switched the labels and the names. So instead of having Walter White and a drug dealer, we have Serbs and Croatians. And now the Serbs are deciding whether to declare war or wait and see whether the Croatians will abuse them or not. And the Croatians can either play nice with the Serbs or be not so nice. And because this is the same game as before, we've just changed the labels, we actually know how this is going to end. We know that the Serbs are going to declare war at the start to lock in a decent outcome for them, rather than risking having the Croatians be not so nice. And this is despite the fact that both sides would be better off if the Croatians could credibly commit to playing nice. That's because the blue three for the Serbs is bigger than the blue two, and the red two for the Croatians is bigger than the red one. So the Serbs declare war because they're worried that the Croatians are going to grow more powerful over time, and once the Croatians have grown more powerful over time, they're going to be able to abuse the Serbs effectively. Now, one thing to note before we wrap up here is that I assumed in the Croatians' payoffs that the Croatians prefer to not be so nice to the Serbs. This is an assumption. However, it actually doesn't need to be the case that the Serbs know for sure that the Croatians are this mean type that actually actively want to harm the Serbs. It could be the case that the Serbs are not sure whether the Croatians are nice or not so nice, but they suspect with a high degree of probability that the Croatians are not going to be so nice. And so rather than risk having the Croatians abuse them later on, the Serbs declare war, despite, again, that the fact that exists that the Croatians might actually be nice, and had the Serbs played nice, the Croatians would have been nice to them as well. This is a problem with commitment and a problem with incomplete information, and this is how war can occur. All right, that wraps up this lecture. Join me next time when we see another way commitment problems can manifest themselves. See you then.